Colorado versus Nebraska, the preview video here, Chris, that we've all been waiting for. Uh, Chris, I'll start us off. I want to talk a little bit about Colorado here, right? You know, one of the the darlings that everybody loves to talk about very early in the season here, right? Look, Chris, we already know what Colorado is at this point, and they've only played one game of the season. Okay, they have two of the best football players in the country with Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter. They have a decent set of receivers, you know, I would say. And I would say everywhere else on that team is pretty mid, as the kids say, right? The question to me is on the offensive side of the ball is can Colorado's O-line hold up against Nebraska's defense, right? They're, Nebraska's defense is hungry, and they are a nasty group of individuals that are going to look to you know make life not so fun for Shador. You know, I have no question Shador can escape and make things happen, but if what I saw in that North Dakota State game continues, Shador – He's not going to make it through, you know, halfway through the season this year, Chris. I mean, he was just being beaten, battered around against an FCS school, and that can't happen this year. That just can't happen. Travis Hunter, I mean, he truly is one of the best players I think in all of college football. But let's not forget about Jimmy Horn and Lejante Wester. I mean, they they flash what they can do, and both of those guys can just go off when you know whenever uh, they get the ball in their hands. So keep that in mind. I think on on offense, you know, Colorado is going to struggle running the ball, right? They only had 59 yards rushing against the Bison. And let's be honest, Nebraska only gave up 56 yards to UTEP, right? So I know it's a difference of opponent here, but if you're Colorado, you're going to have to probably set up, you know, you're going to have to pass to try to set up the run in this one. Um, but again, it's Colorado. We saw them at times last year when teams took away the run, they can throw the ball. So, I mean, that's not, it's a negatable thing if, you know, only for Colorado though, right? On defense, Colorado gave up 450 <laughs> yards to North Dakota State, 160 on the ground. So I look for Nebraska to probably ease Rayola into this one, keep the ball on the ground, keep pounding the rock against Colorado, control the clock. It seemed like they just got, for Colorado on defense, it seemed like they got a little bit better from last year, but overall, they still have a long way to go, right? <laughs> I mean, they got a little bit better, but it wasn't by like a whole wide margin like you wanted to see. Chris, tell me about those scurs and what to expect out of Nebraska. Yeah, no, if you guys are a Nebraska fan, it was great to get a win on week one. Been a couple years. Um, I'll say this. I'm not, I, I, you know, a lot of people are really hyped up. I live in Nebraska here. got a lot of friends that are diehard Nebraska fans. We're at the game. You know, you, you were happy that we went out and did what we were supposed to do against UTEP. UTEP is probably a four or five win team this year with a new head coach, so my expectations were, hey, Nebraska can score in the 40s, great. Um, don't let them score more than 10 points. They did that. They went out and did what you know I thought they should have done. So they looked good on both sides of the ball. Offensively, I will say this about Dylan Riola, man. He was he, He's really good. Um, he is the best thrower of the football Nebraska's ever had, um, and he's played one game. Uh, he, he is. And what I mean by that, it's not the rocket arm or the, the deep ball or any of that. It's the intangibles, you know, the progressions, um, going through your reads, understanding the game of football, who's going to be open. He does that very quickly, he processes that information very quickly. So I was very impressed with him. He was, you know, 19 to 27 for 238 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, the other side, or excuse me, at running back position, you know, we have a, a basically a four-headed monster back there. Um, I really like the, the Dante Dowell kid. He looked really good. You know, he had eight carries, 55 yards and a touchdown. Irving got in in there. The, you had uh, Raheem Johnson, who's been here, I swear, like forever. Um, played some meaningful snaps, looked really good. So Nebraska should be able to run the football again. They were second in the Big Ten last year in rushing. I don't expect anything to change, especially going against this Colorado defense. So uh, Isaiah Nair, the kid from Texas, man, who was hurt last year. He's our big threat receiver, it looks like. Um, he had six catches for 121 yards and a touchdown. He looked really good. Dropped a couple balls I thought he should have had, but uh, – Overall, Nebraska looked well. They did. They looked like they should have. Now, I know it's UTEP, so I'm not going to get too um, overly hyped up about that. But uh, the defensive side of the ball, there was only one bad series Nebraska had. I thought a couple plays there when UTEP scored, they they looked they looked a little out of place on that. A couple missed tackles there. That can happen. I get it. It's week one. I understand that. But, yeah, they shored up the run, 56 yards only allowed. Um, you know, they, they hit the quarterback a couple times. I'd like to see a few more sacks. I think we only recorded one sack in that game, but we did cause two turnovers, which was great. Uh, penalties, not too bad. Could clean that up a little bit as well. So here's my thing with this game. I said this all offseason. Nebraska was going to be favored in this game. They're currently favored by a touchdown. Um, I think it's going to be more than that, Christian. I'm going to give you my official prediction here. 
I got Colorado 24, Nebraska 38. The reason why I'm saying that, I don't think Colorado can stop Nebraska. They couldn't stop NDSU. Nebraska's more physical up front. They got more talent than a team like that, especially. Uh, I do have a little bit of questions, though, and, and you, you alluded to it with that Colorado offense. Shador Sanders, is everything is advertised. He is really good. One of the top couple quarterbacks in the country. You got probably the best athlete and best player in the country in Travis Hunter. You talked about the other two receivers. They're very, very good. Jimmy Horn, man, he is fast. Nebraska is going to have to be able to cover those guys. But the great thing I think they can do in this game, Christian, why I think Nebraska pulls away with this, especially in the second half, is they're going to get pressure on Shador Sanders. They can't block anybody up front. Um, so, yeah, give me Nebraska 38, Colorado 24. Christian, what's your thoughts? You know, Chris, I agree with you. I think my score prediction is Colorado 27, Nebraska 34. Uh, look, we at this point, you know, with Colorado, you have to hold them under 30 points, a job easier said than done, right? Um, because of how explosive they can be in the passing game, right? So, but that's where the questions to me, if you're Nebraska, is I know we've known all last year Nebraska can stop the run. Like you said, I, we're one of the best in the country at shutting down opponents' run games. The problem is, can they hold up, you know, can they hold up in the passing game? Can they get to Shador Sanders? Can they keep contained? Can they keep him from making these off script plays that just looks like, Johnny Manziel, or looks like I would say Joe Burrow esque at times, right? If they can do that, and they can, you know, again, kind of limit some of the the damage, keep everything underneath them, you know, bend don't break, as we say, right? Then I think Nebraska can can actually control this game. And like you said, I don't think it'll particularly be a close game going <laughs> into the fourth quarter. I think Colorado, like they did last year against USC, they can make a comeback. But I, I think ultimately, like I said. This game will really come down to who can play the best on defense, right? Who limits the least amount of, uh, you know, mistakes, I would say, or makes the most amount of mistakes on defense. So, uh, yeah, give me Nebraska in it, Chris. Okay, I got a question for you, Christian. I'd like to uh, ask you here. Um, which coach has more more to lose in this game between between Sanders and, and, and Matt Rule? You know what I'm saying? What, what happens if Nebraska loses this game at home against Colorado? We lost to them last year. Um, we, we know, you know, Dion's getting a lot of hype again. We, we know he's not going to be there long. Um, what's your thoughts about that as far as which coach has the most to lose out of this game? Honestly, it's Matt Rule. I yeah. mean, look, Dion took over a program that went, what, 1-11 and 11 or whatever it was. I mean, so he won four games last year, so he quadrupled the, uh, the expectations there. I mean, Matt Rule, you know, looking at that program, last year he won, you know, five games. He won a, a, one more game than Dion did. But at a place like Nebraska, the expectations are just so different. You know what I mean? Both programs have not been good for a long enough time and have been powerhouses, I would say, back in the 90s, you know, early 2000s, you know, just for whatever. You know, they, they both have been powerhouses at, at certain points. But right now, I mean, man, the, Nebraska, this is the this is where this season really, to me, you can you can make your argument that this is where the season really begins for them, Right. This is a, a, a test with Rayola. It's going to be a night game. It starts at 630. This is going to be the matchup to me that will dictate how Nebraska's game, you know, season goes. The other side of this, we haven't talked about it, Chris, in a long time. Well, since last year, really, but is can Nebraska win a close game? That is where, you know, if this is a close game going into the fourth quarter, I know a lot of Nebraska fans are going to be really, really nervous about that, right? Yourself and me included. That's where this, to me, comes down to. Can Nebraska lift the monkey off their back and do it? If they lose this game, especially in a heartbreaking, like, last-second way to, to Shador Sanders in Colorado, that's going to put a ton of pressure on Matt Rule, man. That can start messing with a young quarterback psyche. If Shador comes out and shits the bed, now nah, he just had a bad game. He could, He's played enough football. I, I, I trust he'll get back on it. Dylan Rayola, he's still at a very pivotal point of his career to where this can make or break it for a quarterback. So... I'd love to hear your thoughts, Chris. What do you think? No, I, I agree with you. You know, these guys are always going to be linked together, right? They were in the same coaching, essentially, time frame, right? It was Dion's first year mm -hmm. last year. It was Matt Rule's. Um, you know, there was speculation when Nebraska hired Rule during that uh, uh, hiring process that we had talked to Dion, right? Now, I don't know how much of that is true or whatever. Maybe it's hearsay, whatever. But, no, I agree. Matt Rule's Matt Rule needs this game. He, he does. This is huge for Nebraska's season. If you look at the schedule, um, it, it's backloaded for sure. But these first four, five, six games here, um, Nebraska needs, especially being at home. Um, 
And, 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 you know, the, the rivalry between Nebraska and Colorado goes back to when I was a kid, man. It, that's when Colorado was really, really good. We were obviously good, too. Uh, the game was always played on Thanksgiving. It was a big deal. It was one of the best rivalries in college football back then. So it's great we renew that, but we got to get this game. We do. This, as far as recruiting purposes go, and I don't care if Nebraska wins two games all season, they got to beat Colorado, and I'd like to see them beat Iowa. But uh, we got higher expectations and obviously two wins. But I'm with you. Matt Rule's got a, a ton of ton to prove here. Um <laughs> Like I said, this game is – I think this thing is going to be close for a half. I do. Colorado is going to score some points, and, and it's not because Nebraska's defense isn't any good. I just – I don't think it really matters who Colorado plays for the most part. They got some elite athletes out on the edge. And like I said, guys, I, as much as I harp on Colorado and I think Dion's a stooge, his son is really, really good. That poor kid takes a beating back there and delivers strike after strike after strike and, and gets himself up off the turf every single time. 